your hand if you study Christopher Columbus. Okay, what grade level? This <coughs> grade as well. So it's really um, very in the in in the social studies textbook. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue at 1492, and um, and it's pretty much this very uh, the same story. And to be able to bring the global perspective that maybe Christopher Columbus might not be celebrated as a hero in all the cultures. That was really what the fifth grade teachers and I, we wanted the students to, to acknowledge or just to become aware of. So instead of just learning from the textbook, we decided that we are going to create a survey, place it on the classroom log, and ask people from around the world to just take a few moments to complete that survey. Do you think um, where you live was one of the questions. And the students were the ones who formulated those questions. They, they had a multiple choice question. Um, is the, uh, is the uh, do you feel that Christopher Columbus was a hero, a villain, or a victim? And then they were asking to explain that answer. So we sent that out and um, last, last week, and um, over the last four days, we got over 280 answers. Literally from, I think we were up to 15 different countries of the world. And, um, and just to be able to take the data that is collected in that survey and, and evaluate it and analyze it, math is coming, math, I mean, it's, it's cross-subject area. So, um, you know, as Nancy said, this should be in every subject, and it is. And the students are now taking the, the, what they're learning and they are converting it into different ways. Some of the students are um, uh, recording a, a song. Some of the students are doing a play. And then we also started contacting people in South America and we're Skyping with them. The students are interviewing them. What are they teaching in their, in their textbook? What are they learning in their schools? And what is their perspective um, of, of that historic figure? So this is taking, I'm sorry, this is taking. Oh. No, I, I was gonna say, just so you know, one of those surveys was filled out by Janet Hale in Tucson, Arizona. Yay! Yay. Go ahead, go ahead, finish up and wrap up, and I wanna ask you one other quick question before you have to go and they have to take their break. Okay. Um, well, that's um, to ask. The kids are excited. They are involved. We are we are actually taking it a step further this year as well. That we are giving the students the responsibility of making those global um, communication. Um, they they are the coordinators, and um, and this is this is something. Usually in the years before, I was the one or the classroom teacher who was making those connections. We're still making the initial connection, but then we're handing it over to the students. They're the ones who are emailing um, the experts or the, the classes that we're going to be Skyping with. They're the ones dealing with the time zone issues and coordinating it and coming up um, that we are going to be talking to this, this person that each one of them has different jobs in, um, during those Skype calls. So it's really a collaborative effort and the kids are excited, they're engaged, they're motivated, they can't wait for the next time that we're um, we Skyping in another person or another um, okay, just real quickly, I still be, I'm just going to be talking to the audience for a second. Did you see from that experience that you just shared about Flat Stanley, which is again, you know, first grade, kindergarten, second grade, and then about Christopher Columbus, which again would be more your fifth grade or your sixth grade. I just have a quick question to all of you. Were the four C's involved? Yeah, yeah. Yes, there was critical thinking, there was problem solving, there is communication, and there is collaboration. Those are to me those four key components. If you really know you're upgrading, because remember you heard Sylvia say, Flat Stanley's been around. We've all been doing Flat Stanley, but we could just upgrade and have those four components added in and you, we're, we're, look at the different level we are with student engagement. Um, just real quickly, Sylvia, to close, I'm gonna be uh, in our live binder. There is actually going to be a tab for uh, your blog. So can you explain a little bit about the history behind the name languages so that they know? That's a good question. Okay, the history behind it is, well, I was born in Germany, and I was raised in Argentina, and now I've been living for the last 20 plus years here in the United States. So, um, it's, in Germany, there seems to be a lot, um, there 
there's a, there's a very big co uh, literary culture of witches, especially for um, for fairy tales, for um, for folk tales, and now it's well when I was young, it was also in uh, in, um, in adolescent literature, and it's always the good witches, and um, so it somehow stuck with me, and um, and when I when I when I moved to the United States, um, it just seemed you know I just dreamt one one night I'm going to uh, start a website about languages. <laughs> And then also what I like about it is that, because um, it's not this idea of, because I know as, I myself as, as a Christian person, the term witch sometimes can upset people. But I know for you, it was more like you said, didn't your dad used to also call you? Yeah, you know, your dad also. He always called me uh, a witch, and uh, we had a dog named witch. It's, it's really, that's a cultural thing. In, in Germany, it's um, the, like I said, it, they're part of the, the literature and uh, they're always the, the smart ones, the good ones, the ones that are willing to help and to do magic to the good. Right. So um, I would absolutely right, but once I moved here to the United States, it was, um, it was that was a cultural difference that I found. And, um, but again, with the languages, for me, it was a play on, on the languages that I speak and that are part of me. Right. So well, that's how it came. Well, we love you, and we thank you so much for taking your time. A round of applause for <laughs> Bye-bye.